Welcome, welcome, welcome to The Tonight Show. Everybody, you're here. You made it. <laughs> this weekend was the divisional round of the NFL playoffs, and after all four games were decided on the final play, people are calling it the greatest playoff weekend of all time. Well, everyone from Buffalo, Green Bay, Tennessee, and Tampa are like, eh, not so much. <laughs> That's right, Tom Brady and the defending champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers were knocked out of the playoffs. Brady's really not used to losing. He normally commutes home via parade. <laughs> now there are reports that Brady isn't sure if he'll play next year. And today, Giselle said, we're invited to dinner on Sunday with our neighbors. And Brady was like, I'm playing next year. <laughs> That's right, Brady said he might retire to spend more time with his kids. Then his kids were like, Dad, we're 35. Do what you gotta do. <laughs> Yeah, it was a weekend of upsets on Saturday. Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers hosted the San Francisco 49ers and lost in Green Bay. Yeah. In other words, Aaron Rodgers failed his at-home test. <laughs> and ahead of his loss to the 49ers, Rodgers criticized the CDC, President Biden, and the fake White House in an interview with ESPN. What a year for Rodgers. He could be the first person named MVP and governor of Florida. <laughs> Do you guys hear about this? President Biden and Bernie Sanders are in a bit of a feud after Biden tried to distance himself from the far left by saying, I'm not Bernie Sanders. And Bernie snapped back saying, I'm not Joe Biden. <laughs> if things start to get physical, they're gonna have to be separated by a light breeze. Usually when guys this old fight, it's over a parking space outside their water aerobics class. <laughs> no one saw this feud coming. It's rare to see the two Muppets from the balcony heckle each other. <laughs> well, this is pretty cool. January is National Blood Donor Month. So if you donate blood, you can get a dozen free donuts from Krispy Kreme or a free coffee from Dunkin'. Right. So you can donate for a donut? Yeah, if you get a dozen donuts, you can donate. But if you do not, you not get a donut if you do not donate. What's the due date? Don't know. But if you do not donate by the donut due date, you do not get a dozen donuts. Darn it. Darn it? Yeah. I do all my donut dining at Dunkin'. But dude, don't worry. Dunkin's doing decaf if you donate. So you're telling me you do not get a donut if you do or do not donate, but if you do get some decaf, you donut and you get to dine out at Dunkin'? Duh. If you do not donate, you do not get donuts. But don't not donate at Dunkin', because Dunkin' gives decaf if you dine out and donate by the due date. Dude. Dope. Donate? You'll do it? No, I'm not allowed to give blood. I got mad cow disease. Oh, sorry about that. Let's move on. I didn't know that. Guys, get this, the FBI said an unruly passenger on a Delta flight was taken into custody after he refused to wear a mask and mooned a flight attendant and other passengers. <laughs> the man ultimately apologized and then returned to the cockpit to fly the plane. <laughs> and finally, researchers have found that drinking red wine can lower your risk of COVID infection. Red wine cures COVID. This sounds like a sign your aunt would hang in her kitchen. <laughs> That's right, red wine can lower your risk of COVID, but you gotta be careful because it can also lower your pants on a Delta flight. Uh, well, guys, everyone's talking about this. Last night at the end of a White House photo op, the journalists weren't supposed to ask any questions, but Fox News reporter Peter Ducey asked President Biden whether inflation would hurt him in the midterms, and a hot mic picked up Biden's response. Watch this. Do you think inflation is a political that's a great asset. More inflation. What a stupid son of a When your age is almost 80 and your approval rating is almost 30, you can pretty much say whatever you want, I think. About <laughs> hey, listen, if Biden's next three years are going to be grandpa at Thanksgiving, sign me up. I'm in, I'm in. Uh, you could tell that felt good for Biden, because today he was fielding questions like, oh, uh, yeah, the moron in the back. <laughs> How about Dopey in the corner? You got something to say? <laughs> Thankfully, there were no hard feelings, and Biden even called Ducey to clear the air. Listen to this. That led to a phone call from the president within about an hour of the salty exchange, Biden telling Ducey, quote, it's nothing personal, pal. <laughs> Thank you.
Then Biden said, uh, I'll say it again real slow so you can understand. It's nothing personal, pal. <laughs> Not sure that excuse really flies. It's sort of up there with uh, don't take this the wrong way. <laughs> don't take this the wrong way. You look tired. <laughs> I hate when people tell me I look tired. Ah. Can we just take that out of yes. our vernacular? Why, why would you say that? Well, also, hey, I'm... you look bad. <laughs> Like, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, but actually, I'm not tired. I slept yeah. great last night. This is how this is how I look. Yeah, this is like... not tired. <laughs> <laughs> of course, all the networks were reporting on the exchange, but I saw that the far right network OAN accidentally added insult to injury for Peter Ducey. Take a look. President Biden, the United States president, calls for uh, Fox News White House correspondent Peter Ducey. He called him quote a stupid <laughs> son of a. <laughs> Peter Ducey. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Dushi. Uh, Biden was like, thanks, I'll have to use that one tomorrow. Uh, I appreciate it. And he was like, uh, uh, Peter Dushi, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Penis Dushi? Uh, I'm sorry, I can't read this. Peter Dushi, sir. Uh, Peter Dushi actually heard that anchor and was like, you stupid son of a. <laughs> Meanwhile, Biden is already dealing with enough as tensions continue to rise over a Russian invasion of Ukraine. The Department of Homeland Security has warned that Russia could launch a cyber attack against the U.S. Yep, they're basing this on evidence from every day for the last 60 years. <laughs> but the attacks could be serious. Russia could cripple the electrical grid or, worse, turn off TikTok. <laughs> America's like, just in case, I'm changing my password from 1234 to 1234 exclamation point. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, an attack on our electrical grid would ground commercial flights. So at United, it'll be pretty much business as usual. <laughs> and of course, former President Trump decided to weigh in on the Ukraine-Russia crisis. In a statement, he said this never would have happened under his administration. <laughs> yeah, because he would have just called Putin like, just take it. <laughs> no, I don't care, just take it. <laughs> Sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Trump didn't stop there. He also claimed that under his administration, the green M&M would still be sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's change gears. I read that the SAT exam is going fully digital and being shortened from three hours to two. Wow, that's like... That's like... Uh, sorry, I don't have an analogy. I bombed on the verbal on my SATs. I'm a, more of a math guy. Who cares? I signed my name. I got 200 points. <laughs> Eventually, the exam will just be one question. Do you have $200,000 to pay for college? <laughs> no. Perfect. Come on in. Some business news. Twitter is reportedly working on a close friends feature that would let users share tweets with up to 150 people. That story again. Twitter is inventing the group chat from hell. <laughs> And finally, a puffer fish named Goldie had to undergo emergency dental work because her teeth were too big. And here she is before and after. Look at this. <laughs> the hardest part was putting on the lead vest for the x-ray. <laughs> when the dentist said, you may experience some swelling, the puffer fish was like, don't take this the wrong way, but <laughs> I'm a puffer fish. <laughs> I'm used to it, you stupid son of a... But there you go. <laughs> The search for a new Supreme Court justice has begun. Today, it was announced that the oldest justice on the bench, Stephen Breyer, is retiring. Yep. At 83, Breyer only has two options, either retire or play quarterback for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's the only thing he's got. Yep, Breyer says he wants to retire so he can spend more time looking like a wise shopkeeper from a Hallmark Christmas movie. Oh. Yeah, it was clear Breyer's been thinking about this. During the last case, the only question he asked was, when's nap time? <laughs> That's right, Breyer's retiring at 83. Meanwhile, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi just announced she's seeking re-election despite turning 82 in March. And now other members of the House are speaking out about her decision. For example, Congressman Don Young said, I don't think Pelosi should seek re-election. The role should go to someone who's, well, my last name. Really? 
Next up, Congressman French Hill said, uh, we're not that young ourselves, but I agree that Pelosi is a little over the, well, <laughs> my last name. <laughs> then Congresswoman Lucy McBath said, Nancy should retire, take some time off, go travel and enjoy a nice, warm, well, <laughs> my last name. <laughs> then Congressman Susan Wild said, absolutely, Nancy should down a couple tequila shots and go buck, well, my last name. <laughs> And Congressman Ted Budd said, totally. She should live life to the fullest and smoke some dank, well, my last name. <laughs> Congressman Barry Moore said, I bet they make a movie about her life and the actress they get to play her will be Drew, well, my full name. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and finally, Congressman Neil Dunn said, all right, that's enough. I think this joke is, well, my last name. <laughs> Everyone has something to say. At least everyone's very vocal. Speaking of Congress, a bipartisan group of senators just announced legislation to make the U.S. more prepared for a pandemic. Wow, great timing. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, they're going to come up with a plan to fight this Y2K thing I keep hearing about. <laughs> Now, listen to this. Rudy Giuliani was asked to turn over files for an election lawsuit against him, but he said that he can't because the FBI seized all of his computers. <laughs> I'm no legal expert, but... If, if all your evidence from one investigation is being used in another, you might be going to jail. <laughs> it... <laughs> Hey, this is cool. Uh, yesterday, David Ortiz was elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame. <laughs> Good pop. And that's uh, not the only good news he got. Check out the phone call that Ortiz got later that same day. Watch this. Hi, I'm calling for David Ortiz. This is David Ortiz. Hi, David. I'm Nathan. I'm calling in regards to your seamless order, the carnitas burrito with a side of queso. I'd like to apologize. We're actually running a little bit late. But in order to make up for that, we're throwing in free chips and guac for you. Yes! <laughs> That's right. Congratulations, Mr. Ortiz. Chips are on. Nathan, free? <laughs> wow. And guac. Yeah. Uh, and finally, this is going viral on TikTok. A police officer in South Dakota showed up at a woman's door for a pretty unusual reason. Take a look at this video. You know, I'm not who you're expecting, um, but Hi. your driver got arrested for the <laughs> <laughs> so, That's right, the officer delivered her DoorDash order while an Uber Eats guy took the driver to jail. The giant winter storm is heading for the East Coast. Uh, but I saw this one tweet from NBC News that, uh, that wasn't super helpful. It said, New York City could see between 2 inches and 20 inches of snow <laughs> this weekend. Oh, thanks a lot. Yeah, That's now I know. Pretty big range right there. I don't know who's making these predictions. Uh, the CDC? Six feet, three feet, ten days, five days. We don't know. We don't know. Yeah, so you'll either be going to work or you'll be buried inside your house. So get ready. Some business news. Uh, Bud Light just announced that they're releasing Bud Light Next, a zero-carb beer that they spent nearly ten years trying to make. Ten years. Wow. Somehow it took a few months for the Pfizer vaccine, but ten years for Bud Light <laughs> Next. Here's some good news. Uh, Delta Airlines will soon bring back hot meal service on its flights. Meanwhile, Spirit is like, that's why we put the engine in the cabin, so people can heat up whatever they want. <laughs> uh, hey, guys, I read that Elon Musk took his kids to Walmart so that they could see the pandemic toilet paper shortage firsthand. <laughs> his kids were like, this is crazy, Dad. Why don't they just use $100 bills like we do? <laughs> Let's go home now. <laughs> Finally, I heard, uh, because of staff shortages, the governor of New Mexico had to fill in as a substitute teacher at an elementary school. Yeah, it's pretty effective when the teacher says, behave or I'm raising your parents' property taxes. <laughs> the East Coast is currently getting hit by a bomb cyclone that's going to dump anywhere from one to two feet of snow. 
For parents, that means 20 inches of snow outside and 20 hours of Encanto inside. <laughs> That's right, the blizzard is on track to be so bad, Boston could be in for one of its biggest snowstorms ever. Don't worry, the plows have been instructed to focus on Boston's most essential places, schools, hospitals, and Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> I'm sorry, the weather in Boston is so bad, Bill Belichick has switched from his short-sleeved ripped sweatshirt to his long-sleeved ripped sweatshirt. <laughs> and that's cold. Cold. Oh. That's cold. Well, here's some wild news. Uh, today, President Biden went to Pittsburgh. Do you guys hear about this? Went to Pittsburgh to talk about the need for his infrastructure bill. And thankfully, nobody was seriously injured. But just hours before his arrival, a bridge in Pittsburgh actually collapsed. Oh. Biden didn't even give a speech. He just stuck his head out of his car window and go, told ya! <laughs> and it turns out, back in 2019, the bridge was given a condition rating of poor. Uh, first of all, when, when it comes to bridges, shouldn't it just be more of a pass-fail type of deal? <laughs> It's either on or it's off, yeah. you know? You go... Well, this is fun. Today, uh, the Bidens announced a new addition to the family, a two-year-old tabby cat named Willow. Aww. Yeah, the president is thrilled to have a cat. Now we can finally say he got something fixed. <laughs> clap. How do you feel like it, it keeps you warm with the clap? Yeah. Uh, I think it's going to be fun when the cat walks across Biden's keyboard and it sets up war with Russia. <laughs> <laughs> right now, the White House staff is amusing the cat with the same laser pointer they used to keep Trump entertained. It's like... <laughs> it, was, it was over there. No, it's over there. No, it's over there. No, it's on that wall. But Biden's been busy this week. Ukraine's president called and told him to calm down the messaging about a potential Russian invasion because it's making people panic. Yeah, we all know nothing calms people down more than saying, calm down. <laughs> Yep, Ukraine's president said there's no reason to panic. Then he was like, now, if you need me, I'll be fleeing to Poland. <laughs> well, Biden isn't the only world leader trying to find a solution to the Russia-Ukraine crisis. Today, French President Emmanuel Macron spoke on the phone with Vladimir Putin. Macron was like, if you invade, France will have to get involved. And Putin was like, <laughs> no, seriously, why did you call? Hey, listen to this. I heard that New Hampshire is going to start selling rapid COVID tests at liquor stores. <laughs> you, you'll know your uncle's got a problem when he's like, I tested it negative 75 times this week. <laughs> 75. Negative. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, a company is recalling thousands of chainsaws because they can spontaneously start running after being switched off. If there's one word you don't want to describe your chainsaw, it's spontaneous. Hey, hey.